Some of the results achieved by Goodweep have been spectacular. One million children used to work in carpet factories in South Asia when Kailash established that movement. Within a decade, the incidence of child labor went down dramatically by 80%, with three quarters of a million children moving from dirty and dusty carpet factories, carpet looms, to classrooms. We at Goodwill are among the proud inheritors of Kailash, your vision and your legacy. So I now want to invite you to further inspire us to make it happen. Today we are celebrating our success. We are celebrating resilience, courage, innovation. We are celebrating most importantly the freedom and smile of hundreds of thousands of children which came as a result of your collective efforts and struggle. Now, we know that we have not yet completed our task, our mission. Overall, if out of 10 children, 9 children are not child laborers, why can't the last one who is left out? It is very much achievable, it is very much possible, it is very much attainable, it is, with, it is within our reach and I refuse to accept that the world does not have that power, that resource, that intelligence now in 2019 which cannot reach out to the last child of the world. My name is Nina Smith and I'm the CEO of Goodweave International. When we first started doing this work, um, there were 240 million children estimated to be working in, in the world and the most recent numbers um, are 152 million. So there's been a lot of progress made, but 152 million children is a huge number. Um, I think about the people we visited outside of Secunderabad. They're incentivized to put their whole family to work, including their children, because they're paid peace rates. And um, the more pieces they can produce, the more they can be in a position to put food on the table. And it's really, that's the situation we're dealing with. And so the system where over the course of three days, they might be able to generate $4 um, with all the family working, you know, they aren't incentivized to put their children in school because they really need to earn those wages. one of the most difficult tasks to get children to school. So in terms of the government regulations also, the government has said that every year they have to do an annual survey in the village that how many children are not attending school and they have to ensure it's, it's the responsibility of the school teachers which the government has defined that it's, they have to ensure that these children are coming to school. If they are not enrolled in school, they should be enrolled back to school. If they are not attending school regularly, they should be attending school regularly. Previously, when a ch uh, child who was coming to school my, uh, uh, did not know how to uh, read alphabets, but now the child knows how to read the whole book. So now, now the child knows how to read a paragraph. So you can see the difference that a child who doesn't know reading alphabet now can read a whole book. So that is the difference. And in terms of percentage, more than 50% have you know uh, uh, achieved age-appropriate learning levels, have improved in the regularity in Beautiful, 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 beautiful.
this school had a pressure from the government that uh, it would close down because there were not enough number of children in the school. So when we started the intervention in the school, the enrollment numbers doubled. What so, so more than 25 children got enrolled to the Gurdwee supporting this particular school and it again got the opportunity to uh, run for another few years. So uh, if, if, if that was not there, the enrollment support, this school was on the verge of closing. So from the last two, three years, there has not been a single dropout in this particular school. So proud of that day, of, of this fact. How old are you? Thank you. you? Uh, six, 16. 16? Wow. And how long have you been in school? Um, five years. Five? And you like school? Yes. Better than working? Yes. What do you hope to do? Fashion designer and doctor. Oh, a fashion designer and doctor. Fantastic. And did you make the dress you're wearing? Did you tailor it? Yes? yes. Yeah. Wow, that's yes. absolutely beautiful. So she has made this dress uh, herself. Wow. Some of the classrooms where the children were literally jumping for joy in some cases and doing backflips, those very kids weren't in school, you know, three years ago. It's important not to forget the link between that transformation and the role of the consumer and the company in all of this. So if I think about um, the school in Pontypot where we were able to uh, nearly double the number of children in the community that were not only enrolled in school but were advancing and that were that were um, becoming literate for the first time and enjoying school and finding also some peace and joy in the um, school setting before where um, they were never able to have it. Um, I, that, that's real transformation. To start working with us, we really had to work one by one and find um, very forward-thinking entrepreneurs like Stephanie Odegaard, who uh, saw their business as a vehicle for social change. started exporting my carpets to America and bringing them into America, I found that there was no certification program in order to ensure to the customer that this carpet was made by adult labor. I started to become an activist with the Importers Association to deal with this issue and to um, come up with a solution to how we could monitor and how we could ensure to the customers, the end users, who are our potential customers that they could have a carpet that was certified child labor free. And eventually, out of that, together with Ferris Harvey and Kailash Satyarthi, we founded Rugmark, which later became Goodweed. It's now actively certifying, inspecting all of our looms and certifying child labor free carpets. I'm James Seuss, CEO of The Rug Company, based in London. The, uh, it's very important for us and for our customers to know how our product is made and where it's made and who makes it, and knowing that, um, that there are no children involved in our manufacturing is vital to the core of our business. The team um, 
can take pride in, in the product that we sell and it's a great story to talk about and we do talk about it um, all the time, both internally and obviously to our customers. And so I think the partnership with Goodweave will be um, even more important as we explore new manufacturers and new regions to manufacture rugs in. Negative campaigning or campaigning against these problems without bringing solutions doesn't create change. And so if we can work hand in hand with some of the companies that are interested in, in, um, in ensuring that workers are being paid and that children are in school and not in workshops. Um, and it's hard work, but if we work closely with them to make the change, we can do it. In between year 2000 and 2016, we are able, we as the world is able to drop the number of child laborers from 260 million approximately to 150 million. 110 million lesser number of children are working. It is achievable. It requires mass movements, it requires partnerships, it requires creative and innovative ideas, it requires strong collective moral voice. If we cannot achieve this, we have a success story to tell to the world. We have that power and that courage and that resilience and that hope to tell to the world that we are the people who are going to put an end to this menace of child labor. Thank you so much. Thank you.